Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Banjo-Kazooie! Last time I finished off Treasure Trove Cove, the second of nine levels in the game. So far, the game total, uh, everything pretty much just goes in multiples of 100, 10, and 2. Every level, from here on out. Uh, we have 200 musical notes, more than enough to open up the next note door, but I have not yet. Uh, so, in theory, we could realistically just skip Clanker's Cavern altogether, and, and for speedrunning's sake, I could see why people would do that, but this isn't necessarily the game that I see people speedrunning, uh, in the same venture that people speedrun Super Metroid or things like that. Uh, but nonetheless, for some proof of concept, Mumbo's Mountain complete, and Treasure Trove Cove complete, and it took me less than 25 minutes to complete, uh, bearing, of course, in mind that I spent, like, another minute in there. Uh, <laughs> thinking that I had missed the grunty switch. That's how bad my short-term memory is. But anyways, let's return to game and enter the third level, Clanker's Cavern. This is the level where it finally starts to take its gloves off and reveal itself as a pretty damn good platformer. Uh, and relatively hard in some places. I mean, this level doesn't mess around. There's a lot of things that can get you if you don't know they're there. For example... Yeah, I don't know what the hell those are. Sewer dwellers, though. We'll just call them. And this jump is kind of tricky sometimes. I mean, if you stand at, uh, on one of these slanted hexagon, hexagon pipes uh, the wrong way, you will slide off. And you will hate yourself uh, for making that mistake. So yeah, stick to the walls. I can't emphasize enough how great this soundtrack is. Jinjo hiding behind the honeycomb. Or honeycomb... Uh, beehive, I guess you could call it. But yes, good music, good music. Who is this clanker? What the hell? What the hell? Ah! He is clanker! A shark! A metal shark! A mechanical shark! A metal mechanical shark! And he, apparently, uh, despite being a garbage disposal unit, doesn't like being underwater. What else is he gonna complain about? That his teeth hurt? Sharks have gills, but not only is this a shark, he's kind of a whale, too. He has a blowhole. Cute. Uh, but this part here is a part where you could very easily die if you're not careful. Uh, which is why I'm going to be as careful as humanly possible. Yeah, this part doesn't mess around. Luckily, there is a bubble fish right here. And in Sonic style... Uh, in Sonic style... Damn it! It starts! Fuck it. Um, but yeah, there's a Jinjo down here. There's some strange form of key down here. And of course there's bubbles. But as I said, in Sonic style, you get a bubble, you get air. You don't get the awesome sound effect, but it is what it is. And I think that's the last one. I hope it is. Damn it. There we go. Okay. Now those don't fill your uh, air gauge completely like they would for Sonic. But be careful, play it safe, and you shouldn't have too much issue surviving down here for an extended period of time. It's not ideal, but you know what? You do what you must to survive. And do what I must, I shall. So you go through this key, this very strange little key, three times, and three seems to be the magic number for everything in this game. Clanker gets air! And again, he has those cartoonish eyes that everything in this game seems to have. This should be more than enough air to get up to the surface. I certainly hope it is. 
Okay, yeah, this is more than enough. So that being said, let us dive down again. There, there's quite a bit to do in this level. This is the first level that things are really starting to get spaced out uh, evenly amongst itself. So here... Ah, yes. How could I forget? Snippet mutants! Fight us. I shall. Yeah, plenty of honeycombs to be had down here. And they have the Yoda Syndrome, of course, speaking... Uh, ass backwards. Beaten snippet mutants are you! This is kind of a kooky Clanker's Cavern remix. I shouldn't call it a remix, it's used in the level. It's just multi-layered. They change it every now and then. Huh. Ah, right. And I think that... Is that seriously my first Jiggy in this level? Yes. <laughs> this is the level where things start to get very long-winded. And as I said, spaced out. In fact, I... No, this isn't more spaced out than the next level, than Bubble Gloop, but it, it certainly is food for thought. And I believe in this pipe there should be... Yes, notes. Try and stay as straight in the center as possible and you won't miss any. We're certainly getting notes quickly, aren't we? But, uh, Jiggy's not so much. Let's surface. And that's the way we came, so I'm not going to go through that pipe. But there's various little pipes spread throughout this level, case in point right there. Where there will be hidden things like Jiggies, Mumbo Tokens, Jinjos. So it's always good to check. And we have ten. That's enough for our next transformation. Surface for air often, because you never know when you might start to run short. And I believe in here is... Yeah, that's a Jinjo. This, I guess, is more of a water level than even Treasure Trove Cove is, but, I mean, that's the nice thing about it. Gold feathers. Very rare items. Not rare in the sense that you never find them. They're just in very small numbers when you do see them. So. Let's get our little gift from Clanker, shall we? He rises and falls, and his positioning and the positioning of the things on him uh, change every now and then. Next, Jiggy! And of course, Clanker wouldn't be Clanker without bitching. So now, yes, he has a toothache. How you could possibly have a toothache. I don't know. I don't understand. This is a very, very straightforward Jiggy to get. It's almost out of place. You don't have to do any gimmicks to get it. But there's our third Jiggy. Some notes. A mumbo token. Yeah, the very first time uh, that happens to you uh, is pretty much the last time uh, that you'll ever be surprised by those tube worms. I, I don't even know what they are. But, uh... Yeah, they get better at hiding uh, their spots. Some are hidden in portraits and things like that. But, yeah, they all attack the same way. Some of them look different. Uh, there's even a bird variant in, a, in the last level of the game. But, 
like I said, you'll you'll get screwed up by them and get hit by them once, and that'll probably be the last time it ever happens to you. Uh, but here is something that you will see many times throughout Banjo Kazooie. Flying from hole to hole to hole to hole to hole. And it's relatively forgiving right now, but trust me when I say, later levels, especially the last level, have a variant of this, and god damn is it unforgiving. You fall, you die, pretty much. Ugh. This isn't, you know, the most intuitive aiming system, I guess, but just keep firing and you'll get it, pretty much. Toothache, this side gone. Swallowed reward. And, yeah, that's basically telling you that his right side is the one with the jiggy. Yeah, anytime you hear that jing jingle, prob pretty much lets you know that... Basically, I'm just going to spoil it. There's a Mumbo token on one side, a Jiggy on another. What's more important? Uh, if you answered the Mumbo token, lol no. But anyways, continuing on, I don't really have any set path that I go through this level. I just kind of move in circles and... don't really know where to progress from there. Uh, 3D platforming. Very, very careful, very slow, move straight across, try and position the camera so that you don't have to make too many turns, and you'll do good. You'll do well for yourself. Oh, don't do something like that unless you're confident in your platforming, which I'm not, so there's no reason why I should have done that. But, anyways, four jiggies in. Getting jiggy with it, yeah, yeah, haha, ha. stupid joke. Let's go on one of his fins. Eventually, we'll be able to do this. Oh, I've already got nine lives. And it, it basically caps out at nine lives. You can't like, get something ridiculous like back in 16-bit gaming when you could get like uh, up to a hundred lives or something crazy like that. But you don't need to. Why did I do that? I don't know. Um... Yes. I do remember this level. I was afraid that this level, since it works in such an odd way, uh, that I would kind of lose track and start making mistakes and forgetting where things are. Oh, and missing jumps, but it's been relatively uneventful so far. But anyways, hidden under that is another honeycomb. But yeah, things are going pretty smoothly right now in Clanker's Cavern, and I couldn't be happier. It is, of course, a longer level than Treasure Trove Cove, naturally. Seriously? Ah, another extra life that I totally did not need. Yeah, I didn't have to do that then. Oh well. I'm not going to complain about it. So. Into his left side first. Or our left, his right. That's the problem that I have with Clanker every now and then. When you try and get near something, uh, sometimes moving platforms like he will plunge you under the water, whether you want to or not. 
So we're halfway done with Jiggies, a little bit further than that on notes. Let's get this Mumbo token. I could quite honestly skip this, but it's a non-issue. Yeah, there's many ways to get into Clanker. He's a lot bigger on the inside than he is on the outside, just like anything in video games that you can enter. Um, he has many entrances, including his blowhole, which we shall enter now. Grunty Switch! Now, this isn't the best idea. This is more or less just platforming, I guess. No real issue there. Okay. Now, I get the feeling that I'm going to regret going in here. Yes, I remember this. Oh, wait, no, I'm not going to regret it. Maybe I will. I don't know. Let's be as inconsistent and indecisive as fuck, shall we? Eight gold feathers. And yes, here we go. Bottles has a new move for us. The Wonder Wing. Of course it makes you invulnerable. And... Uh, as I recall, if you're about to go from some high place, you can use this thing as basically your insurance card, or your call insurance policy to get down. Um, and yeah, do not try and enter this without the Wonder Wing. It will eat you alive. With that being said, we have another Jiggy. Yes, the Wonder Wing. I guess all of these had to have some form of invincibility. I mean, DK64 has it. Mario64 has it. And this... Ah, yes. 3D water platforming. Basically, you just jump through the green hoop, which is your active hoop. Start this puzzle off. Basically, you just go in circles. Pretty basic, pretty easy. They give you a very generous time limit. You can make screw-ups, you can make very near misses. Oh, You can even do that, and you can easily finish. There's really nothing difficult about this puzzle now. Precision puzzles like this are much harder in later levels, uh, where you will fail. And sometimes you can't even do uh, uh -oh, certain timed puzzles without an appropriate upgrade that you don't even get that level. You have to get it in a later level. So, But for now... Slowly but surely, our Jiggy count is rising. Did I really just say that? Whatever. I thought that this level would take a little bit longer than it has. We're not done yet, but we're certainly getting close. Pink Jinjo down here. Ah! One Jiggy left. And for the life of me, I can't remember where it is. Um... Yeah, I can't remember. That's so strange. I want to say I'm done inside Clanker, but knowing me, I'm not. But anyways, we exit through the gills. So many ways to enter this asshole. I do know 
that there is another honeycomb piece, and it will be the last one that I need to complete my next set. I guess when all else fails, just look around the level. This is basically the main part of it, so... Yes, I've done this already. Yes, I have done this already. So, let's take a quick look around, see if anything jumps out at me. Which, of course, it will not, because they do have a draw distance. It wouldn't be one of these types of games without draw distance. Um, where is that thing? Is it? Ah, there's the Jiggy. Well, is that the Jiggy? I think it is. There it is. Found you! Okay. No doubt the way to get to that Jiggy is in there. But I'm not done on notes, am I? I have eight notes to go. Oh, damn. Um, where are they? Where are you? So I found the last Jiggy, but the last couple of notes are probably going to elude me for quite a bit of time. It's not often that you get the last Jiggy before the last note. Well, I guess it is if you're doing the last two levels in the game, but... Uh-oh, running out of time. Plenty of time. Okay. So. Let's enter through the blowhole again. And go the opposite direction. This way. Aha! I knew I'd find you. And are these the last eight notes? I certainly hope so. Because trying to find the last couple notes is like finding a needle in a haystack. But yes, I'm done. Fantastic. So Clanker's Cavern is completely done. Now it's just a matter of escaping. With my life. Actually, if I died at this point, I'd probably be getting out of the level quicker, but I don't feel like dying. Because that's almost just as long-winded as actually escaping the level. Not really, but... 23 minutes is how long I've been recording so far, so yeah, I may end up spending less time in Clanker's Cavern than I did in Treasure Trove Cove. Not bad. Not too bad at all. So we have an extra piece uh, of honeycomb for life, uh, because every third level, as I said, if you're getting every honeycomb piece, uh, is when you'll get your life extension. <sighs> Banjo-Kazooie, my love-hate relationship with you. You have siphoned off so much of my life, and now you're going to siphon off a couple more hours. Anyways, go inside, into the pipe, and we're out. And since I already took care of the bubble gloop painting, yeah, Clanker's Cavern is done. And we can finally enter our next note door. We have 300 notes. I think we can open up the next two note doors or some crazy crap like that. So we could skip bubble gloop if we wanted to. The question is, would you want to? Of course not. Why would I skip my next mumbo transformation? So anyways, this room, a little kooky, a little crazy. Uh, right, right, have to go back. This is actually the part where I get 
the Grunty Switches reward that I thought came from Treasure Trove Cove last episode. No biggie. It's not too far out of our way. And on the nose, a gold piece. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. Digging for gold. Ha ha ha. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just a very odd spot for that to be on her nose. But yeah, this is a pretty big little overworld area. I, I don't think it's quite as big as Super Mario 64's quote-unquote overworld. But it's certainly a big castle. And like everything else in video games, it's far bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. How they cram so much stuff in it is beyond me. That's her business. Hey, keep your feet out. Keep your feet out. You can't use us till you've spoken two bottles. Ah, oh, a future upgrade, maybe. Her uh, fat old sister's favorite sport is broomstick racing. Although she's dim, she attended St. Dungball's School. Wonderful. Party trick is performing a scary strip to Oh my god! You crazy witch. Oh. But anyways, I digress. Here we are in Bubble Gloop Swamp. And I will see you guys on the next episode of Let's Play Banjo-Kazooie. I'm probably going to stop here. I've got three episodes. I can... Just out of curiosity, what are my totals? So, in Treasure Trove Cove, 24 minutes. Clinker's Cavern, 22 minutes. Amazing. Same amount of progress, just less time. Yeah, I chalk that up to my revisiting Treasure Trove Cove out of my own paranoia. But anyways, guys, I will see you on the next episode of Let's Play Banjo-Kazooie, where we enter Bubble Gloop Swamp. Have a good day.